High-speed lines connecting individuals and businesses to the Internet continue to increase at a phenomenal pace. Internet, the Internet has grown o to over 400 million nodes while maintaining an estimated 65% annual growth rate. Long-distance telephone calls have increased five times in the last 25 years to a total of 900 billion minutes per year. Telecommunications impacts all industries and institutions. Financial services, utilities, manufacturing, transport, retail, government, education, medical, and so on and so forth. The message to everyone is that businesses have to get connected or they will fail. And, and also I may point out that the future is limitless, especially in wireless and converging technologies. In general, telecommunications companies can be divided into service providers and equipment providers. Service providers supply the communications channels for voice and data transmissions. Examples include AT&T and SBC, or it used to be SBC before it was merged with AT&T, then Verizon and Bell Cell. So they're basically three major uh, uh, form of Bell operating companies uh, in existence today. Equipment providers are the, those companies that supply the user and connected, the connectivity equipment such as routers and switches and telephones. For example, these companies include Cisco, Corning, Nortel, 3Com, and Lucent. Without question, Fiber optics has changed, has made a huge impact on telecommunications. Just look at the bandwidth and throughput capacity of these two 8.3125 micron, about the diameter of your hair, fiber strands in the foreground, compared with the 800 copper twisted pair next to them. In fact, two optical fibers can carry up to 20,000 telephone conversations at the same time. So compared with copper, optical fiber cabling has tremendous advantages, including long distance signal transmission, large bandwidth, lightweight and small diameter. They're non-conductive, they they're, non they're secure, and can be designed for future application needs. Another tremendous advancement in telecommunications is multiplexing such as dense wave division multiplexing, which uses numerous wavelengths for encoding data. This results in multiplying throughput in long-haul networks by as much as 40 times or more. I'll talk more about multiplexing in Module 6. Here's another example of the new frontiers in telecommunications. This is called meshed multiple technologies and media. And everyone knows about wireless and all the newest and latest wireless technologies and all the advancements on the horizon in, in this exciting area of telecommunications. Standards are important in the, telecommunica in the telecommunication industries. Unlike federal and local code, companies do not have to follow them, but they do so at their own peril. Standards are documented agreements containing technical specifications or precise criteria that stipulate how a particular product or service should be designed or performed. Organizations that develop and or publish standards include ANSI, or the American National Standards Institute. ANSI is partly governmental industry uh, and, and partly governmental and industry and is composed over a thousand representatives from industry and government who together determine and publish engineering standards uh, for industries. EIA, or the Electronics Industry Alliance, is a trade organization composed of representatives for, from the electronics manufacturing firms across the United States. TIA, or the Telecommunications Industry Association, focuses on writing standards and information technology wireless, satellite, fiber optics, and telephone equipments. 
IEEE, or the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, is an international society composed of engineering professionals and promotes development and education in the electrical engineering and computer sciences field. The Association of Telecommunications Industry Solutions is a North American trade or association made up of thousands of companies that provide communications equipment and services. And then there's ISO, or International Organization for Standards, which is a collection of standards organizations representing 130 countries with its headquarters located in Geneva, Switzerland. And its goal is to establish international technological standards to facilitate global exchange of information and barrier-free trade. And finally, we have the International Telecommunication Union, which is a specialized United Nations agency that regulates international telecommunications usage, including radio and TV frequencies, satellite and telephony specifications, networking infrastructure, and tariffs applied to global communications. It provides developing countries with technical expertise and equipment to advance their technological base. Several government and state regulatory and legislative bodies you should know uh, include, first, the Federal Communications Commission, or the FCC, which was formed in 1934 in response to the growth and needs for control over the telecommunications industry and is, is the primary national regulatory agency involved in telecommunications. And also you should know about the Public Services Commission, the PSCs, which are the state's equivalent to the FCC. Regardless of which telecommunications field or position you choose, the following will serve you well. First, a thorough knowledge of the public telephone network and the carriers and regulations that are part of it. Familiarity with enhanced telephone services, a mastery of the basic principles of electricity, a clear understanding of how computers accept and interpret data from other computers over network, the ability to design, install, and troubleshoot, troubleshoot basic networks, an understanding of how the Internet works, familiarity with wireless transmission methods, and also the ability to install, maintain, and troubleshoot the active electronics and systems of cables and wires that carry telecommunications services. In summary, we have covered in this first module on the overview of telecommunications the communication, that communications is the conveyance and understanding of meaningful information from one entity to another. That telecommunications refers to the use of electrical signals, often converted to optical pulses and back, to exchange encoding information between computerized devices across a distance. That the elements of a communication systems are the source, transmitter, communication channel or transmission media, receiver, and destination. Also, we learned that the, the field of telecommunications, in the field of telecommunications, professional, professional typically divide its services into three categories, voice, video, and data. And the convergence brings them all together of a single IP network. And finally, we learned that the new packet switch network will replace the old circuit switch network. Right now, it's simply an overlay. This completes module one. Please take quiz one and I'll see you in module two.